Hello class, welcome to the uh, umpteenth lecture in this sort of hodgepodge collection of things. But this is the first lecture about exponents, hopefully just of two. And I want to begin with a question. This is a question, this is probably, in my opinion, one of the best questions on the ACT. And they don't phrase it quite this philosophically. Uh, and I'll ask it in both ways that they do. But first of all, does squaring a number always make it bigger? Does raising something to the power uh, to, of two or more, um, does multiplying it by itself two or, or, or more times, does, does that always make it bigger? And, and the temptation, if you only restrict yourself to certain kinds of numbers in your mind, is to say, well, of course it does. Of course, if I say, um, what's two to the two, that's four. And what's uh, eight to the two? Well, that's 64. And, and even if you start to get a little bit creative and you might think of some negative numbers, that negative two to the two, and that's, that's four. And on an absolute scale, just sort of measuring the size, the magnitude of the numbers, that two, negative two is, if absolute value, two is less than four. So yeah, it would seem like whatever kind of number we pick, it's going to get bigger. It's gonna have a greater magnitude. And unfortunately, there is a class of numbers that we are forgetting when we think that way. So for example, what about 0.5 squared? Well, you might think of that, that's the same as saying what is half squared, and a half times a half is a fourth, which as a decimal is 0.25. And I think it's pretty clear that that has gotten smaller. 0.25 is smaller than 0.5. And whether we want to go negative or not, 0.6, uh, negative 0.6. If I multiply that by itself, then I'm going to get a positive 0.36. And again, on an absolute scale, on a, just a magnitude scale, that that is bigger now than 0.36. So somehow there are some numbers, some of these decimals or fractions kinds of things that get smaller uh, when you square them. So we'll come back to that um, at the end. So um, like I said, I had a question for you. Next up, I wanna talk about the properties of exponents. And then we'll use these to sort of answer that question about what is going on there. So the first uh, property that we need to mention is when you have two numbers with the same base and different exponents being multiplied. That's pretty abstract. I mean, if you have two to the fourth and two to the third, uh, what can you do with that? Well, think about what it means. Never just write math down and do it without being sure what it symbolizes. These are all shortcuts, and you would never do shorthand for a language you don't speak. You would never write the abbreviations for things in a language you don't understand. So why would you do that in math? This is a shortcut. This is an abbreviation for two times two times two times two. That's what this one is. And this one is two times two times two. That's what to the third power means. Multiply by yourself and have three of them. So if we put all that together, how many twos do we have? Well, we have seven twos. So this is a shortcut for two to the seventh. Now, of course, mathematicians like to generalize things and talk about them with uh, letters instead of numbers so that it can apply in any case. And so what we're saying is that if you have some base with an exponent of m times the same base with an exponent of n, then that is going to equal that same base and just add the exponents. My little mantra that I was taught in high school or whenever um, was to say same base, different exponents, add. So you probably hear me say that a fair bit. All right, so next up, we then say, um, what about division? What about uh, two to the fourth over two to the third divided by? Well, again, we expand this. We recognize that it's a shortcut for two times two times two times two over two times two times two. And because they're all multiplying and no one is adding, we can cancel freely. And that means that I'm left with just one. So again, we could have seen the shortcut for that 
And that means that when you've got b to the m over b to the n, the shortcut is to just say b minus n. Now this naturally leads to a very um, unintuitive situation where you could end up with negative numbers. That if I had uh, more on the bottom than I did on the top, that that would then lead me to have the negative one. So hopefully this then now connects for you to say, aha, a negative exponent means I've got more on the bottom than I do on top. So if you ever see a negative exponent, you should think of a helpless little turtle, oh, flip me over, and that it means I need to go to the other side. I need, so if this, this one was in the numerator, I needed to flip it to the denominator. If I have one over two to the minus one, that's the same as saying two to the positive one in the numerator. That the negative sign means flip me over. Uh, this also then leads to not just negative numbers, but zeros where you might have two to the third over two to the third, which is gonna be two to the zero, which is just gonna be one. That if you have the same number on top as you do on the bottom of a fraction, then it all cancels and you're left with just the number one. Eight over eight, uh, in this case, is gonna be one, not zero. There is, of course, an exception, as there always is in math, is that if you have zero to the zero, we have no idea what that means. Or better, we have lots of ideas about what that means. If you're coming at it from the positives, it might mean zero. If you're coming at it from the negatives, it might mean one. There's a lot of different things that it could mean depending upon what situation you're in. So we can't give that a number answer. It could mean a lot of things. So zero to the zero is the exception. All right, so we talked about uh, multiplying, uh, dividing, and then, of course, there is exponentiating. That if you have two to the third uh, squared, what does that mean? Again, don't use the symbols unless you know what they mean. That if we look at the inside of the parentheses, that means this. And squaring means times yourself. So that's two times two times two. That's one group. And then the next group is that. So obviously, rather than writing that all out long ways, mathematicians got wonderfully lazy and said that's two to the six. So if you've got a power to a power, you multiply. If you've got uh, b to the m to the n, then that is the same as b to the m times n. So a power to a power, you multiply, is the little shortcut that you'll hear me say. So I hope those are all familiar to you. I hope you've seen all those before and that they're not uh, something new that you're encountering for the first time. I hope not. All right, so now, what is all this for? Well, in calculus, we get a lot of functions that have uh, exponents that are fractions. So you need to be pretty familiar with um, exponents in general and then fractional exponents after that. So what are fractional exponents? Well, if you've got some number uh, to a power that is a fraction, and remember this word rational exponent, rational is just an adjective form of ratio where you've got something over something. We like to talk about m over n. So the way you should think about this is, I'm gonna write this huge because it's super important, powers over roots. Okay, so we've been talking about like uh, two to the third. Well, I could write the number three, the exponent there, as a fraction. That is three to the, uh, two to the three over one. So that's, that's pretty obvious that that's the same. Three is the same as three over one. And then if you wanna talk about square roots, what number times itself so that there's two of them, well then that's pretty clearly gonna be a half, that we've got four to the one, that doesn't change the number four, but then the fractional part means that you're gonna be doing, that's the same thing as the square root of four, which we can solve. So you might even see this as a decimal, you might even see that to the 0.5, and that is something then that is probably better to do fractions than decimals, clearer to be able to see powers over roots, something that decimals might hide from you, that that's 5 tenths, so that's 5 over 10, which you better simplify to 1 over 2. 
All right, so when we, when we try to solve these kinds of uh, problems, when we start having numbers to fractional exponents, we, we might approach it, depending upon how hard it is, as either doing the root first or the power first. But technically, you are supposed to do the power first. But that can lead to numbers too big to think about, uh, even for a calculator. So, for example, I might have 32 to the, let's say, uh, 4 over 5. Well, there's a rotten decimal. There's a number that's pretty hard to, to think about, right? No, actually, it's a very straightforward number. If I do the root first, so the fifth root, let's, let's think about that. Let's have a little thought bubble up here. The fifth root of 32 means what number times itself five times equals uh, 32. And you may not be used to thinking exponentially, so we probably need to review those real quick here. Uh, let's have a thought bubble within the thought bubble. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. That's to the sixth power. That's probably about as bad as I should ever get. The threes, we can do 3 and 9 and 27, and then 9 times 9 is 81. And if you were really pushed, you might come up with 243 by hand but I kind of doubt it. Um, fours are just taking the twos and just skipping every other one. So 64, uh, 128, 256, that's probably pushing it. Eh, I shouldn't ask that of you. Um, the fives are much easier. Five quarters is 25 cents. No, five nickels is 25 cents. Five quarters is a buck 25. Five times a buck 25 is 625. Again, that's probably pushing it right about there. Six and 36 and 216. And I think beyond that, I wouldn't push you beyond squares. That's 7 and 49, 8 and 64, 9 and 81, 10 and 100. Oh, but tens. Psh, tens are a snap. You just count the zeros. So definitely going to be using the tens. All right, so back to here. We said that if we're looking for something that times itself five times, so we're in this fifth column, and there's that 32, so that means that the fifth root of 32 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. So now I can kind of say, all right, well, I did that part, and now I need to take that to the fourth power. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So this whole thing is equal to 16, a nice normal number that you can get. Um, this then starts to get even more complicated when you start trying to look for numbers in the denominator that you might know. That if you had 3 to the x equals uh, 1 over 81, well, you could look at that and you could say 81, that's a power of 3. So how many, it looks 3-ish, it's 3, 9, 27, 81, it's to the fourth. So that's 1 over 3 to the 4th, and we said negatives mean flip it over, so that's uh, to the 3 to the negative 4th, meaning we can solve the equation x equals negative 4, like that. So this can get kind of tricky and make for some weird equations, and you might have to raise both sides of an equation to a power in order to cancel a weird fractional exponent on one side and solve for the variable. So, that can get tricky. Uh, let's think, lastly, about graphs, about trying to graph power functions. x, y equals x to some rational exponent, okay? So, the easiest one by far uh, is to do y equals x to the 1 to the 1 over 1, to the 3 over 3, to the 9 over 9, that those all are our old friend, and I'm just going to draw the first quadrant, pop, there we go, that that is the line y equals x, and it goes through the point 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 3, 3. But it's, it's, it's very nice. These All of these graphs are going to go through 0, 0, because whatever exponent I have on x, 0 to any power is still 0 and one to any power is still one. So these points, super important, exist on all these graphs, okay? So 
What about the weird ones? What about the strange guys like y equals uh, x to the, let's do three fifths, okay? So there's a strange graph. There's something that's unusual. And I'm trying to think about some points that I can graph. Well, I can definitely graph zero, zero. I can definitely graph one, one. But then the question becomes, what's the next nice thing to take the fifth root of? So again, we can design our own points here. We're trying to investigate this graph. So two to the fifth is gonna be the next easiest number to take the fifth root of. So two to the fifth is two, four, eight, 16, 32. And so if I, if I plug in 32, if I plug in x equals 32, what's gonna happen to it? Well, I'm gonna take the fifth root of it, that'll be two, and then I'm gonna cube it. Then I'm the powers over roots, I do the power next, two times two times two, two to the third is eight. So by two to the, um, by, by x equals 32, I'm gonna get only up to eight. That 32 comma eight is a point on this graph. So you can see that that is a point that is more over than it is up. That there's, the x's are increasing more quickly than the y's are. So I, I made a smooth curve and you can see what happened there. Now, if we then try to do one that goes the other way, that is got a, a bigger m than n, a bigger uh, numerator of the exponent than the denominator of the exponent. So let's just do the opposite of that. Let's do x to the 5 thirds. That, that's gonna be a lot in common. It's gonna have zero, zero. It's gonna have one, one. But then what's the next, what's the next easiest number to plug in? Well, if I'm taking cube roots, I definitely wanna find what two cubed is, and that's eight. So if I plug in eight, if I say uh, x equals eight, that's gonna be something that will go in nicely for the, for the root, powers over root, so I can take the root of that and get two, and then I take it to the fifth power, and I get 32. So that's way up there, so eight comma 32. And that is a point that is definitely more up than uh, over, so it needs to curve that way. So let's look at the graphs of these. Let me pull up my graphing program here on Quick Graph, and let's look at those uh, three equations, okay? So um, like we said, the, in the red here, you can see that I've got my uh, three-fifths power. And that went, when we went over 32, uh, we were only up eight. So there's the point uh, 32 comma eight uh, versus when we went uh, up really quickly uh, at eight comma 32, that's on the green graph, the y equals x to the five thirds. So I've also included on here that original graph y equals x to the one over one as a contrast. So obviously, when our exponent is bigger than one, we're gonna go up more steeply than y equals x. And when our exponent is less than one, we're gonna go up less steeply than y equals x to the one. So that's the big picture here as you zoom out for numbers greater than one. But, like we said, when you start getting numbers that are close to or less than one, things are reversed. So be sure to get into your notes something to the effect of what's happening here, how the, the picture is backwards, like we said at the beginning, for numbers between zero and one, for numbers less than one, uh, the tiny decimals and fractions. That the red curve, which has an exponent less than one, is winning, is curving, is, is above for uh, the graph between zero and one versus the green curve, which has got an exponent greater than one, is losing, is lower between zero and one. So keep that in your notes for today, and we will talk about all possible kinds of power functions to graph next time.